All right. So can we get can we get real black in here? Oh, let's get let's get blackity black black. Okay, that's what I wanted. <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Mike from Real Black, and today we have the honor and privilege of being with Zainab Johnson, who is an American actress, comedian, and you might know her as the host of 100 Humans and the uh, Alicia on Amazon Prime's Upload. And this Mother's Day, she's got a show coming up at Helium Buffalo, and that's going to be on May 14th, 2023. Yeah. And on May 15th, she's coming to my hometown, Philadelphia, again. But this will be my first time getting a chance to see her at Helium Comedy Club in Philadelphia. And that's May 15th, 2023. Welcome to the show, Zainab Johnson. How are you doing? I'm pretty good, Mike. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. I've, I've, been, I've, I've been seeing, like, you, you were just at City Winery. Not too yes. long ago, and and punchline. You've you've hit Philly a few times. I've yet to see your act. I'm a big fan of comedy. Yeah, um, yeah. Philly is a great city. Philly, Philly is a, is a wonderful city to perform in. So I'm actually, as I've been hitting up cities, it's because I'm running this hour because it's going to be taped at the end of this month for as a special. And what I love about uh, Philly specifically is that Philly is not going to give you any courtesy laughs. You find out in Philadelphia if your material is funny. If it works in cities like Philly, New York, you know, Chicago, then DC, then you know that you have good material. Basically, basically wherever there's black people. <laughs> well, wherever, wherever there's a community of people, and yes, 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 a lot of times that comes in the kinfolk form, right? But uh -huh. wherever there's a community of people that are used to telling the truth, used True. to confronting something head on, unabashedly, th those are the people who will sit there and they're unafraid to not laugh when it's not funny. And they laugh a lot when it is funny. And, and I love cities. That's like that. true. It's a tough crowd. Basically where there are black people. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to contradict you. But um, <laughs> no, Philly is a working class town and, and they work hard for their money. So when they come out to see us, or when they come out to see Zainab, they're, they're coming there to laugh, you know, yes. and you got to oh, yeah, and you yeah. got to bring the good. So do you have a name for the special yet or? I do have a name for the special, but it will not be released until the special uh, is released. The title of it won't be released. So right now it's just my live one hour comedy taping. OK, but it's a good title. I prod you. Because I see, I, I, when I scour your clips, you have Seth mm -hmm. Meyers and you have Chocolate Sundays and different mm -hmm. things like, is it different playing to different audiences? And you're touring around the country also. Like yeah, when, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I've been touring around the country and, um, you know, it, it is very different performing for television, something like Late Night that's on network television, right? So they're... Um, pretty beholden to like their advertisers, their commercials, things like that, right? Their ad spaces. And so, and, and you're really talking to like middle America. And so because of that, uh, you, there's certain content, maybe even language that you have to stay away from. Uh, you know, when I perform in clubs all around the country um, and when you do a special, you are not really, um, you don't really have those boundaries, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so like Chocolate Sundry, Chocolate Sundays is a show that is done at the Laugh Factory in Los Angeles. Um, I perform at the Laugh Factory, the comedy store, the improv all the time. I've been running my material there. When I'm in New York, you know, I perform, you know, at the Comedy Cellar, at New York Comedy Club. Uh, when I'm in Philly, as you said, you know, I've done City Winery. I've done Punchlines. I, I, I look forward to doing Helium. Um, you know, like I, like the the, yeah. the local clubs in each city are great. And that's actually that's where I prefer to be. Right. So, I mean, how do you tailor your material um, for these different rooms? Well, I don't. I don't tailor it because they're not coming to see me tailor it. They're coming to see me be me. <laughs> you okay. know, like they can they can. It, that, that's the beauty of when you go see Chappelle, you're not going to see Zainab. You know what I'm saying? And vice versa. So to tailor to any room or to any specific thing would be a disservice to myself. And so anybody that is coming to see me, think about it like you coming into my house. To okay. sit with me and watch my comedy for an hour is like I'm inviting you into my house, into my life. 
And I want you to enjoy yourself while you're there. And hopefully when it's done and it's time to leave, you want to come back. Okay. All right. So, yeah. so this this is this hour that we're gonna get a preview of. Yes. Unadulterated Zainab. Yes. We talked to a lot of comedians, and it seems to be a calling. And you come from a, a family of thirteen kids. Were you yes. the funniest? And if if not, if so, what led you down this path? Um. Yeah, I do have twelve siblings. Um. And. I probably am the funniest on cue, meaning like I know how to professionally be funny, but I'm sure that every single one of my siblings and my parents would disagree and say that somebody is funnier. Um, and, and a lot of my inspiration is pulled from them. You know, you see me on stage. If I go into a character, I'm never doing a character. I'm rarely doing a character from real life. Like you ain't never going to see me on stage doing Trump, but you'll see me on stage like becoming my brother, you know? Um, uh, so yeah, so, so I am one of 13. Um, I, at, you know, I, I didn't, I, I don't have the story where, you know, how you hear a lot of comedians say like, you know, I was like two years old, I was three years old and I heard like a, uh, Eddie Murphy album or, or whatever. I heard a comedy album and I was like, oh, this, I need to do this. Right. So I never, I didn't have that experience. Um, I love comedy. I loved comedy. I have always loved comedy. I have always loved stand up comedy. Um, I kind of watched certain things later just because we didn't have access to certain things in my house. So I feel like I, I, I knew of Deaf Comedy Jam, but never saw it while it was live, you know? I, mean, I don't know if that was an age thing or just like my parents being strict. I'm not really sure because I know they like that type of stuff. But I know once I got out on my own when I was in college, that's what I used to do for fun. Just go to a comedy show. You know, it's like that to me is like easy formula for a night. You know, you go to a bar. It's like you don't know what's going to happen at a bar, a club. You got to do the work. You got to dance. You got to, you know, a comedy club. You just get to sit there. While okay. somebody else does all the work and you reap all the benefit, you know, like joy and laughter and a good time. And so I always appreciated that, but I never thought it was a career. Like I never, you know, looked at it and thought like, look at them just living their dreams. I don't know what I thought. I just thought that it was enjoyable. And then when I saw like Eddie Murphy and stuff like that, I just didn't even see that as like just comedy. I, I saw him as like a superstar. Do you get what I'm saying? Exactly. And, and yeah. yeah, and therefore like unattainable. unattainable. Yeah. 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 And so uh, it wasn't until, you know, I like graduated college and I was definitely ready to, you know, I was in a, in a school, like I had transitioned from my student teaching to, you know, now seeking like full-time employment. And a friend of mine who was like into music, she was like, I'm going to move to LA. I'm going to become famous. And I'm like, I can't let her be famous without me, you know? And so... <laughs> So I moved to LA, you know, shortly after she moved, I moved and met her there. And then I was on my pursuit to like fame or something. And I had no idea what that was, what that looked like. The closest thing that I understood was like actors. Like I knew what, I knew what it was. I, I, I understood the trajectory of an actor. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Because we get to see like award shows. We get to see like auditions sometimes, you know, growing up a kid in New York City, sometimes they would shoot a lot of times, actually, they would shoot all types of Law and Order episodes in my building. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I remember I was a kid when they were taped, a, a teenager when they were taping the Chappelle show in my, right. you know, area. So I understood like what actors, how actors could work. And so that was like my first attempt, like, okay, well, let me just try acting. But I found that everything I kept going, everything I kept succeeding at was in the comedy space, you know? Mm. And so I started taking like improv classes. I started taking sketch classes. And while I enjoyed it, it didn't really like, it didn't light a fire in me. Mm. And then one day uh, I saw a, my, a friend of mine took me to a stand up show that was all women. And uh, I was like, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try this tomorrow. I'm going to quit my job tomorrow and I'm going to try what I just saw tomorrow. Um, well, and, what job did you have at the point? Like what, what was the risk versus reward at that point? Uh, the only risk was uh, kind of paying my rent, but also help. The reason why, like I was struggling, but I was fine with that. Like I, I was like, 
you know, every month by the skin of my teeth, like paying my rent. But that job, like it made me a little bit more comfortable. You know, like I have that was a salary job. Uh, I was an assistant to I, I was someone's assistant. I was like an office assi executive okay. assistant. Yeah. And so I had health insurance. That was the big thing for me. That was the thing that got me to take that job. Um, it was like, oh, I haven't had health insurance. in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, when you are young, you like, I mean, I'll go to Planned Parenthood and the emergency room. Other than that, it's in God's hands, you know, right. Um and so th when this job, they were offering me uh, health insurance, dental. But here's the thing they don't tell you about a full time mm -hmm. job. You don't got time to go to the doctor. I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. You know, and so once I realized that, I'm like, well, I didn't move all the way across the country away from my family, away from my comfort, away from my home. I didn't I didn't move here um, to this really lonely place to be an assistant that can't really go to the doctor when I need to, you know what I'm saying? And so I quit, like I told you that day, the next day I put in my two weeks notice because I'm a professional and I have integrity. <laughs> <laughs> I put in my two weeks notice and, and then that night I went to an open mic. I just Googled like open mics near my apartment and I found one, it was at a hookah lounge. I went and did what I thought was like five minutes of stand up material. I wrote like my best version of a joke of jokes and people laugh. I, I noticed that what I wrote wasn't really what they laughed at. Like I would start with something like I remember I wrote down. I have 12 brothers and sisters. Right. Mm -hmm. And I wrote something else, but that's not what they laughed at. But when I said I have 12 brothers and sisters, they reacted like what? And then and then I immediately said from the same mother and father. <laughs> and, and then they laughed and in that moment I quickly understood what my comedy was like what was funny about me you, you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, no and, I and definitely then, I definitely sense that like in, in some of the clips I saw you definitely know how to read a room yeah and and get the pulse of of what people are thinking you know and, yeah. and that's that's half I'd say that's well, at least half of the art is yeah. moving the energy around the space, dividing people and then bringing them over to your side, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and I know I will say this, Mike, when I did it, it was, it felt like something I had never done before. I played sports. I, uh, you know, I did some cheerleading. I ran track. I scored, I scored high on tests. I was in, I could debate. I could walk or run. I could do a lot of stuff, you know, but none of it. And I could be good at a lot of stuff, but none of it felt like once I got up on that stage and and, and did stand up, nothing felt like that. And I was like, oh, I think I got to keep doing it. And, mm -hmm. and, and that was like, what, 11 years ago or something like that. And okay. so now 12 years ago. And so now it's like, now I'm here. You know, about, about to, to take first my first class. special. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, and you went to school, you went to college in New York? Yeah, I went to the City College of New York. Yeah. Okay. So you were at the cellar a lot. I I was I am I am at the cellar a lot when I'm in New York, but I live in LA now. Right. No, I'm saying when you were when you're hanging out at comedy. Club. Oh, when I oh my gosh. So yes, absolutely. I was at the cellar a lot. I was at Caroline's on Broadway a lot. Unfortunately, it is recently okay. closed down. Yeah. Um, I was at the tail end of a, a friend of mine used to do Boston Comedy Club, which was in, yeah, it was right. like, yeah, adjacent to the cellar. Um, yeah, but yeah, definitely used to frequent the cellar and like Caroline's. Okay. Yeah. So we have a, we have a lot of mutual friends. Um, you know, I went to NYU, so I guess oh, so. okay. Judah Friedlander was. Yes, I know Judah. And Godfrey is a good friend. And yes. uh, Keith Robinson is my Philly homeboy. So I was just about to say Keith is Keith is my mentor. Actually, when I Keith is one of my mentors. When I first decided, like, okay, this is it. Like I'm doing stand up. Somebody must have told Keith, right? Like I'm just getting up on stage in LA, getting up at every open mic I could go to in LA. And Keith calls me and he's like, I hear you doing stand up. And I'm <laughs> like, I mean. Yeah, I think I'm pretty good at it, you know. And he's like, "When's the next time you come into New York?" And I'm like, "I could get on a plane like that, like you know, like I could come whenever." And he's like, "All right, 
I'll see if you're good. He's like, when you come to New York, I'm going to throw you up on stage. We'll see if you're good. You know how Keith is. <laughs> He's like, we'll see if you're good. And I'm like, okay. And so I go to New York and he gets me a spot at, at uh, Stand Up New York, which is on 78, uh, and I think 78, uh, right off of Broadway. And he gives that like, they put me on a check spot. If anybody, if you guys don't know what the check spot is, mm -hmm. it's when it's at the point in the show where the waiter drops the checks. So the audience is no longer paying attention to the show. They trying to figure out if what they ordered is on the check, how much they spend in is the date worth it. You get what I'm saying? They trying mm -hmm. to fit. It's the moment where it's, de it's defined. Is it a good night? Right. And so they put me up at that spot during that time. It's five minutes. It's really quick. And I did it. I mm -hmm. did what I had. I did my material. I did what I practiced. I did what I planned. But I'm waiting when I get off stage, like, what's Keith going to say? And mm -hmm. as soon as I get off stage, he said, you got something. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. He said, I'm so mad. I was rooting against you, but you got something. <laughs> and, so no no regrets then? No, no days yeah. where you said, oh, maybe I need to go back and call that boss or whatever? No, I think that's the that's the thing about stand up with me is I think that's when you know, like when it's when it's it's scary and it's awful and you're failing and you still want to do it and you want to do it more than anything. I think that's when you know, because I've had jobs before where the going gets tough and I'm like, oh, I'm out, you know, like mm -hmm. I don't care. I don't need to be here. But stand up when I, I take it home with me at night when it. When it feels good, I that I, that that I walk with that feeling. When it feels bad, I equally, you know. And and my only goal, like I can't really do anything else until I overcome the bad. I'm like, okay, well, we got to get through this day so I can get back on stage. And you know, like when I remember one night I bombed at the cellar, like a few, like maybe two, right before the pandemic, I had bombed at the cellar. I did a bunch of spots, and this one it was my last spot that night. I was so pissed, and I bombed. Mm -hmm. I, the next day, I could not wait for my spot. I didn't care about any of my any of any of my other spots in the city. I'm like, as soon as I get back to the cellar tonight, I got that room. The main, I gotta, I'm gonna get on stage and I gotta freaking get. And let me, I was on a mission. I was on a mission. That's your sports training. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that too. But even sports, I'm like, mm, yeah, 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 yeah. That's definitely that. Wait, let me just fix this so you don't look as tall as me. I'm probably taller than you. Mike. You might be. <laughs> How tall are you? I'm six, about six, six one, something like that. Oh no, 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 close, but no, I'm five eleven. Five eleven. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that brings us into our next topic, which you talk a lot about relationships, and I yeah. understand that you're single. Sure. Okay, if you want to say it that way. <laughs> sure. Relationship advice. I mean, what's what's? Do you have any? For those watching, uh, yeah, I mean, I, you know, know how you want to be treated, so you recognize that that's what's happening. Okay. Yeah, you know, like I think I'm not I'm not a person that has had a whole bunch of relationships. I'm really like a hopeless romantic. I'm kind of prudish, you know. Like I really want to love. Every I'm not like a, oh I I don't I I have no interest in like liking somebody a little bit like anything lukewarm you know mm -hmm. I'm like I want it to be like love and passion and fun and all of those things and if it's not that then I'm just like mm. and so I don't find myself in many relationships um, but I do try to stay very true to myself you know. Okay. Yeah, and so, so you, I would you're, suggest you're that. All, you're open. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. always open. And I've never been like on the apps. And so I really like the good old fashioned, like get the courage up to come talk to me. Like I, I'm into that. Okay, you hear that? Now, once again, Zainab's going to be <laughs> at the <Ilium, laughs> comedy club. Oh, it happens already. But God, people show up at my shows like I'm here to ask you out on a date. And I'm like, all right, well, let me just finish doing this material. That's what I came here for. You know, like it happens. Well, all it's got to be hard because, I mean, you know, uh, no pun intended. Um, difficult. It's got to be difficult being a woman on the road. I mean, you're traveling quite a bit, especially. Um, 
to be discerning and, and protective of yourself. I mean, can you speak to that a little bit? Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm protective of myself anyway. And I think I grew up like that, you know, I grew up like, you know, kind of like ended a crack era in New York city. I grew up in, I was born in Brooklyn, I grew up in Harlem. And so I'm no fool. I'm no stranger to, uh, street smarts. You know what I'm saying? I'm no stranger to like awareness and, you know, I, and I, and I don't pretend to be, and am not naive when it comes to, uh, societal like dangers, especially as it relates to women, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so, you know, I can't predict anything, but I definitely try to be a bit cautious. Um, I was in Rhode Island doing a show on Wednesday night. And the next day I decided to, I had a day off in between Rhode Island and Boston. And I uh, decided like, I'm going to go to like Cape Cod or Martha's Vineyard and like spend the day, you know, spend the day and the night there. And I like took a lot of video and, but, but I didn't post it until I left. Right. That's smart. Because I can't. I, you can't, be, you know, I can't let you know where I'm at, you know? Well, we've seen that happen um, most yeah. recently with the uh, the rapper. Yes, unfortunately, at the Roscoe's, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah and I'm, I'm just it's, it's escaping my, his name's escaping me right now. It's so, it was so tragic, but um, yeah. and I want to mention his name because it's it's um, it's important. Yeah, I mean, that's that's just social media savvy at this point. I mean, yeah. And I do get it. Like, you know, we do live in a time of like now when everybody trying to like instant gratification. And I, I more than anybody understand that because I get instant gratification doing stand up. Right. I right. say a joke. You laugh. I instantly know if we vibing at every moment. Right. Um, and so I, I, I truly do get that. I, I, and I and I get like a lot of people in the world feeling unseen and whatever they can curate by way of social media makes them feel seen. I understand on a human level, I understand all of those things, but because I ain't trying to get got. Yeah. You got to wait. Just, <laughs> well, you just, know what I, what no, I understand is everybody ain't out here, it, you know, operating, it, it, you know, for my greatest good. Amen to that. Um, so is there going to be an upload season three? There is definitely going to be an upload season three. It will come out this year. Expect to see that this fall. I don't have an exact um, air date yet, but this is definitely my favorite season by far. It's so good. So if you haven't watched it yet, make sure you check, make sure you catch up. Seasons one and two are available on Amazon right now. Uh, it's a prime comedy original. Uh, and yeah, and season three is coming to you guys very soon. Okay. So it's in the can already. It's not affected by the strike. It's not affected by the strike. We we wrapped on season three at the end at the end of 2022. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. Um, let me just check my notes real quick. How you doing today, by the way? I'm doing really good. I'm really looking forward to you know you know growing up in New York. I've never been a Buffalo. Like I've been in Philly a bunch of times, but I ain't never been a Buffalo. So I'm really oh. I'm really looking forward to 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 previewing my hour in Buffalo tomorrow. I'm really looking forward to previewing my hour again, because as much as I was at City Winery and I did it, I've made a couple of tweaks since. And so I'm really just looking forward to these next two shows. Wow. You're you're literally like at the, like I'm about to cross the finish line. You're at the 25th mile, huh? Yes. The yes, special. yes, yes. So, I mean, how, how long does it take? I mean, now it's sort of like your first album, basically, when you're putting together your first special, like you have your whole lifetime of experience. Yeah. To put into this hour. But I mean, how long do you think it took from conception to getting it to where it is now uh, to build that hour up? Um, from conception, a little under a year. I remember I started it last year. Um, I started it last year, maybe like the spring, summer. And so so almost a year Yeah, okay. from conception to to taping. Okay. And, uh, you mm -hmm. know, for those who don't know, I mean, like, uh, I mean, it's a lot of trial and error. I mean, are you putting this yeah. together on spot dates or you, you just, you, you basically, one woman showed it and said, here's, um, and just started headlining right away with it. Like how, how do, how do you build an hour? I guess is the question. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny, Mike, I was thinking about that the other day, like where it started to where it is now. Um, I think that, I kind of took what I wanted to, 
like I think I thought about two things. What are the funniest bits that I'm doing right now? And also, what do I want people to know about me? You know, like, what do I want them? If this is the first time that they ever experience me, what do I, if this is the first time and possibly the last time they ever get to experience me, what do I want them to leave with? Mm-hmm. Um, and like, how do I want to represent myself? What's the story that I want to tell? And I wanted to set a really strong foundation, uh, a foundation so that for any special to come after this, it's like, oh, we, oh, oh, we know Zainab. So now you have enough, you know, you have, I remember when I watched Raw, I was a kid when I, when I saw Raw for the first time and I thought it was like the best thing I had ever seen. And then the friend of mine was like, yeah, cause remember he said this, it was, a, it was like, he called, he called it back from delirious. And I was like, what is that? <laughs> and he was like, you've never seen delirious. I'm like, I had to fight and sneak to see Raw. What, you know what I'm saying? And he was like, oh, you got to watch delirious. I didn't see delirious until I was like uh, a senior in high school. Mm. And I was like, and it, and when now I still love Raw more because that that was my first, and right. you know what I'm saying. But once I watched Delirious, I understood Raw so much. You know, what I mean? Raw is just a continuation, mm-hmm. and so I feel like you know I wanted people to feel like I know this girl, and so now every single thing she says going forward, I'll have context for who she is. You know, um, and so I started there and I all my material, most of my material is very personal. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, some of the things that you see posted online, those are probably the the, the safer clips. Right. Oh. Um, not 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 safer, but they are they're the things that I don't mind giving away to the public for free. Right. Yeah. They're very short and they tend to be your closing Mm-hmm. Or or they or they're the things that have already been on TV before, you right. know. Mm-hmm. Um, but this is a very like intimate and funny and hilarious insight into like who, what, what, what all went into making me who 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 you're chatting with today. That if my hour um, makes anyone watching it laugh and feel seen, then I will be a happy woman. Wow. I can't wait. So, all right. If you're watching this right away, this is up forever. So you may be watching this in 2028, But Watch it immediately. But if you're watching it now, which is May 13th, 2023, you have a chance and you're near Buffalo or Philly or any of these other towns, you have a chance to preview Zainab's hour-long special. Make sure that you're at Helium Comedy Club in Buffalo on Mother's Day 2023 or the day after Mother's Day in Mm -hmm. Philadelphia at Helium Comedy Club. You're in for a treat. This is stuff that no one has seen before. It's never been released to the public. And you can say that I was there first. So please, 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 if you're a real Black fan, come out and support Zainab Johnson. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you so much for having me.